up guys, we're in chapter number 4 which is isothermal design of reactors and essentially we're going to see here the reactor engineering methodology for this isothermal design section number 1 so we're going to use essentially two methodologies the first one is using conversion conversion, you know, it's based on a limiting reactant and this one is very nice to analyze because it's going to give you the basis you normally use x as the or conversion as the x-axis and just use here, I don't know, maybe flow, volumetric flow, uh, volume, whatever and essentially actually you are more interested in volume so we're going to model that also rate of reaction here we're going to analyze it how the conversion makes these guys change or how as the conversion advances how do they change and we have them already in our design equations uh, we have it for CSTR for one tip here it's only one reaction guys one species is reacting or maybe many species but it's in the same reaction maybe you have A plus B you're reacting to have C or maybe even plus D different numbers here, different stoichiometric values so if you have only one reaction I will totally recommend you to use the conversion methodology it's way easier our design equations are, are already there we have no like complication uh, but uh, if you want to use other like flow or concentration it's still valid actually if you don't have idea you get like mixed you don't know what to use either conversion flow concentration I will always recommend you to go with concentration but anyways we have it for CSTR, we have it for batch reactor, we have it for plug flow reactor and we have it for pack bed reactor which is essentially almost everything one thing here once again it's only one reaction so probably you're asking yourself when do we use the other methodology which is flow rates or concentration remember flow rate is F of A it's moles of A per unit time or concentration which is Concentration of A is moles of A per unit volume. We will use these essentially with the same reactors when we have multiple reactions. So that's an easy one. If you have many reactions, maybe you have A turns into B and C, but also A plus B will give you, I don't know, maybe F. You have two reactions, so you have multiple reactions. So you need to use this. If you use a conversion, it will not make a lot of sense actually we're going to see later in chapter 6 that that is totally not recommended because you are basing only your conversion in this uh, let's say species whereas you're also having this one in this other reaction so don't, uh, don't make it more complex just go and use this flow or concentration design equations for CSTR, batch, PFR and PBR now we also, let's say, we're going to use it for CSTR startup. What does that mean? It means essentially you have a CSTR and you want to change conditions or actually it's maybe not in operation and you want to start operating in steady state. Well, we're going to use it either for a single reaction or for multiple reactions, but we're going to use that. So, essentially, flow, concentrations and... Yeah, essentially just flow and concentrations go in CSTR startups. Why? Because we're going to have this in steady, in steady state. So you are going to have this derivative and working with this derivative is kind of complex with conversion so it's way easier just go to concentration. Uh, it's, it's difficult to work it with conversion. We're going to actually use it for or work it with concentration and flow and semi-continuous, well, I'll tell you we're not going to see this one right now, we're going to jump this one for chapter 6 once we see uh, multiple reactions it's also single and multiple reaction but single one it's not that interesting right now we're going to see this one here in the chapter number 6 and here I have a small note due to the differential equations and many species involved it's easier to calculate conversion at the end 
So I know maybe they tell you what's the conversion or at what conversion or they are revolving around conversion and you are you probably will be asking me or asking yourself why should I use this methodology when I could use this one? But yeah, that's cool. But for example, if it's a CSTR problem with multiple reactions, you will not be able to use these equations. So if you use them because you thought that using conversion will be easier or you will get the answer faster, you're wrong. You will need to first solve it with this methodology and then at the end use the definition of conversion, which is how much do you feed or you're fed versus the reaction or the total reactant. So once again, I'm going to give you a small like, process uh, procedure or methodology for a batch CSTR and PFR. I don't include the PBR because that one we're going to see it a little bit later because we have pressure drops. So you start here, you have your problem. Then, first of all, chapter one, you apply your general mole balance equation for the type of reactor you have. Then you get the design equations of that reactor. And you might change it either to conversion or to flows or concentration, depending on the uh, exercise. Now, the first thing you want to know is, do I have the rate of reaction as a function of conversion? So if you have it, which will be a, maybe a table versus conversion, go directly and evaluate the equation, solve and analyze data. So you get the final answer. So this is typical problems we do or we did in chapter two and even chapter one. But what happens when you don't have it, which we can in chapter three, you might not have this data. So what you do, we go to determine the rate law essentially in function of a concentration. We use stoichiometric tables, which we saw also in chapter three. And once we get this, we go here. If no change in moles and no pressure drops, so be sure that you have no pressure drops, which is common for PBR. Uh, oh, it, PBR is common to have a pressure drop. So batch, CSTRs, and PFR, normally they don't have a drop in pressure, so you can go directly here. And if you have no change in moles, that's very important because if you are using gases, especially in PFR, if you're using gases, maybe you have a change in mole. So you will not be able to go directly. But if you have no change in moles and no pressure drop, you just need to combine the rate law, which we got here, and combine it with the stoichiometric tables and get the rate of reaction. And then, once again, combine and evaluate equations. So you have your design equation and you have your rate law data with stoichiometric values. Just solve it. And PBR, this one goes if you do want to calculate the pressure drop. So if you have a gas phase, which is typical for, for PFR and PBR, PBR. Uh, normally PFR, we don't have uh, pressure drop, so it's essentially just for PBR. You go here, you need to combine the mole balance, which will be a a uh, differential equation probably, the design equation, okay, that's also another equation, the rate law and tables, here maybe you get another differential equation, and the pressure drop, which is another differential equation. So you will have at least two differential equations from combining these guys here and this equation here. You will have two differential equations, you need to solve them simultaneously, actually if you do it by software, you can go directly to here to analyze the data and get the final answer. But if you do it, let's say, by hand or by analytical methods or numerical methods, well, you will need to eventually pass through here and then do this here. And eventually you get to the end zone here, which is having the answer. So hopefully you understand a little bit. I'm going to let's say like explain you in every reactor we go what type of methodology we're going to use now let's continue with the second methodology which is essentially just for PBR and semi-continuous reactors or the startup of a CSTR 
is the use of flows or concentrations. So you are start with your problem. This is chapter one. You start with your general mole balance. Then chapter number two, we change to conversion. And chapter number three, we go directly to determine our rate law. Then we relate that and we use stoichiometric tables, which is still chapter 3. So this block is essentially chapter 3. It's chapter 2 and chapter 1. And eventually go, we go directly to our pressure drop. We are going to value that pressure drop. Once again, I told you that this one is essentially for, let's say, multiple reactions or at least one reaction of PBR. So once again, you have your mole balance, you have your design equation. Your design equation comes from the conversion here, or actually concentration, let's say, whatever you're using, flow rates. Then the rate law plus tables, this is stoichiometry. Be sure you're accounting everything, guys. And the pressure drop, this one is from Ergun equation. Once again, you're going to have at least two differential equations and you need to solve them either by software, and you go directly here, or by hand, which will be either analytical methods or numerical methods. Either way, you get to analyze the data, and hopefully you get the correct final answer. And yeah, essentially it may be some complicated guys, but I told you we're going to be seeing this methodology in every problem we do. So you will get along and you will get to start to know it and it's, you're going to get to used to use this so don't worry and we're done with section one I told you it's just theory about the methodology we're going to actually start analyzing reactors in the next section which the first one will be batch reactor so see you in the next video and hopefully you are getting the concepts What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.